Hey everybody, I'm Chef Todd and welcome to Under the Apple Tree, where I build, grow, and of course cook my way towards a handmade life. Fall is here and that brings soup season. So today I'm going to show you how to make a beer cheese and broth soup that goes great on game day. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Here in Green Bay, soup season means beer cheese. I've evolved my recipe over the years by adding brats. Personally, I look forward to this one, but only make it once or twice a year, it not being the healthiest thing in the world. This recipe is actually quite simple in the end, and will make about 10 servings, so you may not need to cook for a few days as well. So prepare your shopping list, you're definitely going to want to make this one. Our ingredients today are as follows. One pound of uncooked brats, an onion, four medium carrots, and four stalks of celery, two cloves of garlic, a fresh jalapeno, mine's fresh from the garden, two cups of hot chicken stock, one and a half bottles of beer, we used an India pale ale, one third cup of butter, one third cup of flour, one quart of half and half, five cups of shredded cheese, a combination of sharp cheddar and Monterey Jack works well, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of dry mustard, and a little popcorn and paprika for garnish. For this soup, we will be using some base aromatics, onions, carrots, and celery. I small dice the onion, and I give the celery and carrots what I like to call a soup cut. The soup cut is a small chop that will cook quickly and fit on a spoon. This cut can vary in size depending on the cooking time of your soup. To easily mince garlic, you can smash it using the side of the knife and the flat of your hand. Dice the jalapeno, leaving the seeds in. Many butchers will sell brat stuffing or brat patties, but if yours has casings, simply remove them. To remove the casings, simply run a knife down the length of the brat and roll out the meat. In a two quart or larger braising pan, cook your brats over medium heat, making a point to break up the large chunks. Saute for three to five minutes, and then add your vegetables, cooking them until the onions become translucent and soften up, likely another three to five minutes. At this point, we're going to start adding the beer, but don't just dump it all in there. Pour a few ounces at a time and use your spatula to scrape the crispy little bits off the pan. Those bits are called fond and are the cornerstone of many sauces, soups, and braises. As all your bits are dissolved back into the liquid, you can add the rest of the beer and keep this concoction warm while we start the next part. In a large soup or stock pot with a heavy bottom, start melting your butter over medium-high heat. When it is melted and bubbly, mix in your flour. This is called a roux, the base thickener for many cream soups and some wonderful southern dishes. We want to cook this for five to seven minutes to kind of cook out that flour flavor. Slowly add the stock to your roux. Add only a half a cup at a time while stirring constantly, allowing the liquid to absorb into the flour while maintaining a constant temperature. After adding all the half and half, you should have a thick, almost velvety sauce. We have now added the mustards and Worcestershire. Mustards tend to balance cheese very well, adding a tart flavor. Slowly add the cheese while stirring. The cheese should melt fairly quickly. At this point, I like to use an immersion blender to give us the smooth texture we are looking for. Transfer the beer and brat mixture to our stock pot, season with salt and pepper. If the soup seems too thin, you can slowly bring it to a simmer to thicken up. Do not boil, it will break. And as always, taste and adjust your seasoning. I always prefer corn popped in oil. Heat a saucepan over a high heat for a couple of minutes. Add one tablespoon of oil and one third cup of kernels. Shake the pan often to keep things moving. And try to keep the lid vented. If the steam is allowed to escape, you will have a fluffier finished product. As the corn begins to rapidly pop, shake the pan more often to prevent burning. When the popping slows to two or three kernels every couple of seconds, remove from the heat and transfer to a bowl. Enjoy your hot soup garnished with popcorn and a little paprika. Or if you want to be a true scotty, finish it with a dash of kraut. Well, now you can make your own and satiate that craving. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Apple Tree Show, subscribe and comment on the Under the Apple Tree YouTube channel, and of course contact me for any of your catering needs. 
Thanks a lot for hanging out, and I'll see you next time under the apple tree.